Hi, what I have here on the workbench today are a few AA rechargeable lithium ion batteries sent in from Xstar. It is a fairly well known brand, and I have reviewed many batteries and chargers from them before. I will leave a product link in the video description below for those who are interested. On this channel, I had reviewed another model of the AA rechargeable lithium ion batteries from Xstar before, and the main difference between this one and the other one I reviewed before is that this one has a built in USB C charging port. Obviously, rechargeable batteries based on lithium ion chemistry typically have a terminal voltage between around 3.7 volts to 4.2 volts. In order to produce the 1.5 volts output, they have DC to DC converters built in. If you have not seen what's inside one of these batteries before, I would recommend you checking out one of my previous videos. I will put a card up here and will also leave a link in the video description below. Anyway, these batteries are actually quite well engineered. They sacrifice a little bit of space on top of the battery here to accommodate the DC to DC converter and charging circuitry, and have a shortened lithium ion cell at the bottom. All these are packaged in a standard AA or even AAA form factor. In fact, I had reviewed the AAA battery before. As you can see, we also have the section on top. You probably can't see that very clearly, but we have a section roughly this length. That's actually the DC to DC converter, and the rest is a shortened cell. So when you think about it, it's actually quite amazing. They can cramp all these into this tiny package. The ones we're looking at here today use a more traditional charging approach, which is embedding a USB-C charger in the battery itself. The one I reviewed before uses the same terminals for charging and discharging, but it requires special circuitry for charging, as the required charging voltage is significantly higher. If I remember correctly, it will only start charging when the voltage is close to 5 volts. So there are definitely some pros and cons with each of these approaches. For the ones without the built-in USB port, obviously you will need to have a specialized charger. And the ones with built-in USB port, obviously you can charge with any USB charger. The charging cable provided by XTAR is this 1 to 4 cable, which means you can charge a set of batteries with just one USB port. And to be honest, charging all these batteries together using the default USB cable is kind of fun. All these blinking lights are kind of mesmerizing. Now, I don't know if other USB-C port equipped AA batteries support this, but these XR batteries can also be charged in XR chargers that support the 1.5 volts lithium ion batteries. So essentially, you can charge the batteries using either the dedicated charger or via USB cable. It just gives you more options. The main drawback though is I can see that because of the physical size of the USB-C port, the supporting circuitry occupies slightly more space. That means there is less room for the battery. So if you look at these two batteries side by side, the left side is the one with the USB-C port. You can probably see a line here that is roughly here, and that section here on the top is the circuitry. I know it's a little bit hard to see, but on the right hand side here you can see this is the one without the USB-C port. And the section for the circuitry is ever so slightly smaller up here. So you can see it's roughly a, I would say, 2 millimeters difference in terms of the height. So there's a trade-off in terms of the battery capacities. Now this one with the USB-C port has a capacity of 2450 milliamp hours, and the one without has a slightly higher capacity at 2500 milliamp hours. Now in my opinion though, it probably doesn't matter that much, as it's only a 2% difference between the capacities, and this one with the USB-C port definitely gives you more flexibility. I did a few capacity tests earlier. The first test was using a 0.1C discharge rate at roughly 250 milliamps. I used a AA to D cell battery adapter to hold the battery because I couldn't find my AA battery holder, and also I wanted to test out how well these batteries work together in parallel. And this battery holder is convenient for that test later. The measured capacity is at 2374 milliamp hours, which falls short of the claimed 2450 milliamp hours capacity. I should note here that the measured capacity is a function of the discharge rate with these 1.5 volt lithium ion batteries. The efficiency of the built-in DC to DC converter drops under high load current. So I assume that with a lower discharge current, the measured capacity would probably be closer to the nominal 2450 milliamp hour number. In this next test, I increased the discharge current to 500 milliamps. And you can see that the measured capacity dropped further to 2378 milliamp hours. And then I increased the discharge current further to 1 amp and did another discharge test. This time, the measured capacity dropped even further to 2180 milliamp hours. During the charging and discharging cycle, the battery stayed relatively cool, and the battery temperature only became slightly elevated during the 1 amp discharge testing. 
One of the main benefits of using a DC to DC converter to step down voltage is that you can actually regulate the voltage and make sure the voltage is almost constant during discharging. And you can actually see this very clearly in the chart provided by XSTAR. Now, the downside of this is that you can no longer rely on the terminal voltage to infer the state of discharge. But if you take a look at the discharge curve on XSTAR's website, you can see that towards the very end, the terminal voltage is designed to dip to around 1.1 volt, so that the typical battery gauge circuitry found in most of the electronics can at least warn you the battery is about to run out. The maximum discharge current is specified at 2 amps, so let's actually verify that with an electronic load. And the electronic load we're using here is this MDP-L1060 from Miniware, and it's actually quite nice. I did a review on this before, but let's actually turn it on. So now we're setting it to 2 amps, and I'm just going to use this contraption to hook it up, as I don't have a proper battery holder here. So this is just an adapter here, and I'm putting in this single battery. And let's hit run. So right now we're drawing 2 amps. Ignore the voltage on this electronic load as the long wires makes the voltage drop very significant. So actually let's take a look at what the terminal voltage is across the battery here. It's 1 volt. And how about the battery itself? You can see that, yep, across the battery is still 1.3, 1.4 volts, so that's not a problem. So the issue is indeed this long wire, and right now we're only measuring 0.8 volts at the load side. And I'll let it run for a few minutes and take a look with the thermal camera. And it has been running for a couple of minutes. Let's take a look. You can see that we're actually approaching 50 degrees and it's still increasing. Of course, because of the circuitry at the top of the battery, that's where it's heating up as you can see in this thermal image. So although the battery can handle this maximum discharge rate, for prolonged use in an enclosed area, I'm sure the temperature will be even higher. Let's actually take a look at the temperature again. So now you can see after about 5 minutes, it's actually approaching 60 degrees. And now let me increase the load current even higher to see at what point it will cut off. Let's turn it off first, and let's increase the current. Let's do 2.29. Let's try that. Yeah, we can still handle that. Let's do 2.5. Close enough. Yeah, seems to be able to handle that just fine. Let's do 2.8, 2.9. No problem. Let's do 3 amps. Still going. Let's do 3.5. Nope, you can see that we're oscillating, so the battery enters this protection mode. So I will say that the maximum current you can get is right above 3 amps. Now, quite a few viewers had asked me whether or not you can use these batteries in parallel. Because these batteries are essentially switching power supplies with active circuitry built in, I'm not actually sure how well these batteries would work together in parallel. From my experience, at least for larger switching power supplies, putting two independent power supplies outputs together in parallel can be quite challenging without load sharing resistors. This may or may not be an issue for these batteries, as the DC to DC converter's output resistance probably is much higher than a typical power supply. So I guess the only way to find out for sure is to try it out. And for this test, we'll start with 2 amps, as that's the maximum discharge current for a single cell. And we have three of these in parallel. So let's see here. Right now we're at 2 amps. Let's start. And I'd expect it to work with no problem, as you can see here. Now ignore the voltage reading, as we mentioned earlier, that's because of the long wires. That's why you see this significant voltage drop. So anyway, so right now we're at 2 amps. So let's increase it to higher. And now we're drawing 3 amps. No problem. 4 amps. No issues. Let's go to 6 amps. And it seems we can draw right around 5.5 amps 
and then there's something funny going on. Even though we're not able to get the maximum 6 amps out of the current, I think this result is still pretty good, given that we're actually paralleling these batteries, each with a built-in DC to DC converter. So not bad at all. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Your participation makes videos like this possible. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.